Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses the treatment of acute coronary syndrome, a collection of conditions resulting from coronary heart disease. There are other modules available that describe the causes, risk factors, and diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome in greater detail. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as comprehensive as possible. However, it may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature, and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or skip through them in any order you wish. Acute coronary syndrome, ACS, is a set of three heart conditions each caused by insufficient blood flow to the heart muscle, and therefore, oxygen, resulting in damage to the heart. There are three types of ACS, unstable angina, an unpredictable chest pain or discomfort, and two types of heart attack, non-ST elevation, and ST elevation myocardial infarction. Coronary artery disease occurs when the arteries supplying the heart muscle with blood become clogged with fatty cholesterol deposits in a complex process called atherosclerosis. These deposits, called plaques, narrows the diameter of the coronary arteries, which can create an imbalance between the supply of oxygen available to the heart muscle and the amount of oxygen needed. Over time, the plaque can rupture and a blood clot can actually form. The blood clot further contributes to obstruction of the coronary arteries and can directly result in acute coronary syndrome. One type of heart attack, and STEMI, is caused by partial obstruction of a coronary artery and causes damage that does not involve the full thickness of the heart wall. The other type of heart attack, STEMI, is caused by complete obstruction of a coronary artery and does damage the full thickness of the heart wall. The treatment of unstable angina, and STEMI, and STEMI, aims to increase blood flow and therefore oxygen delivery to the heart muscle and to decrease oxygen consumption by the heart in order to reduce chest pain, prevent further heart muscle damage from a heart attack already occurring, and prevent a future heart attack. The symptoms of unstable angina, and STEMI, and STEMI are quite similar. Each condition can manifest itself as chest pain or discomfort, shortness of breath, weakness, lightheadedness, sweating, nausea, and vomiting or palpitations. Differentiating one condition from the other, therefore, can be quite difficult, but all three conditions are serious emergencies that require prompt medical treatment. When a patient first complains of ACS-like symptoms, he or she is given a combination of a thorough medical history or interview, a physical exam, an electrocardiogram or ECG, the key tool for determining the source of heart problems, possibly a blood test, some diagnostic imaging tests, such as an x-ray, and perhaps an exercise stress test. Though treatment options for acute coronary syndrome will depend on exactly what heart condition a patient has, his or her age, the severity of symptoms, and any other complications present, early supportive treatments are similar for most unstable angina and STEMI and STEMI patients. First, oxygen is almost always given to the patient right away to increase the supply of oxygen to the heart muscle. A type of medication called nitroglycerin may also be given often under the tongue to dilate or widen the blood vessels of the heart, therefore increasing blood flow and decrease blood pressure. Morphine will relieve any pain and anxiety and will also dilate the blood vessels. And Antiplatelet medications prevent the formation of further blood clots in the arteries and are also often started immediately. These include ASA or aspirin, clopidogrel or Plavix, and medication called glycoprotein 2B, 3A inhibitors. Further treatments may include anticoagulant medication, which helps prevent blood clots, thrombolytics, the standard blood clot busting drugs used to open the arteries, beta blockers, which reduce the oxygen demand of the heart, statins, or other lipid lowering agents 
to lower cholesterol and other dangerous lipids in the blood, ACE inhibitors for cardio protection, and calcium channel blockers, which relax blood vessels to increase blood supply to the heart, relieve angina, and treat high blood pressure. Percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, is a major non-surgical procedure for opening the arteries, and sometimes coronary artery bypass surgery is necessary. The next few slides discuss treatments for acute coronary syndrome in greater detail. Anticoagulant medications, often called blood thinners, do not actually thin the blood but help prevent the clotting or coagulation of blood. They prevent new clots from forming or an existing clot from enlarging. Examples of anticoagulants include heparin, warfarin, and low molecular weight heparin. Thrombolytics, also called fibrinolytics, dissolve the blood clots in the coronary arteries that obstruct blood flow to the heart and sometimes cause heart muscle tissue death. The standard thrombolytic drugs used include altoplase, tenecteplase, streptokinase, anastreptlase, and urokinase. Beta blockers reduce the oxygen demand of an oxygen-deprived heart by slowing the heart rate and lowering blood pressure in the arteries. They are now well known for reducing deaths from heart disease. Beta blockers include propranolol, carvedilol, bisprotolol, asprutolol, atenolol, labetalol, metoprolol, and esmolol. Intravenous administration of beta blockers within the first few hours of a heart attack can reduce the destruction of heart tissue. And beta blockers are also important after a heart attack in preventing another one. Statins are drugs that lower the levels of lipids, fats, in the blood, including cholesterol and triglycerides. Since high blood cholesterol increases a person's risk of having a heart attack or stroke, the long-term use of statins reduces this risk and can increase the life expectancy of individuals with a history of heart disease. In addition, statins also appear to stabilize atherosclerotic plaques, making them less prone to rupturing and forming clots. Statins include lovastatin, simvastatin, pravastatin, fluvastatin, atorvastatin, and rosuvastatin. Angiotensin-converting enzyme, ACE inhibitors, are a group of drugs originally developed to lower high blood pressure, hypertension. They are also given to people who have had a heart attack in an attempt to prevent further attacks and to prolong life, and when taken on the onset of a heart attack, may in fact reduce the damage. ACE inhibitors include captopril, ramapril, enalapril, quinapril, benazapril, perindopril, and lisinopril. Calcium antagonists, also called calcium channel blockers, help widen and relax blood vessels, which lowers blood pressure and improves circulation. Some of the medications in this class have the added benefit of slowing the heart rate, which can further lower blood pressure. They may be used to treat high blood pressure, angina, chest pain, and sometimes arrhythmias, abnormal heart rhythms. Calcium antagonists include verapamil, diltiazine, nifedipine, emlodipine, and philodiprine. Under some circumstances, a doctor might prescribe a calcium antagonist along with other antihypertensive or high blood pressure controlling drugs or with a statin. Percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, is a method to unblock narrowed coronary arteries without performing surgery. It includes both angioplasty and stent procedures. During an angioplasty, a cardiologist or heart specialist or a specialized radiologist inserts a catheter, which is a long, flexible tube with a small deflated balloon around it into a coronary artery. The balloon is placed in the narrowed area of the artery and is expanded with liquid, which pushes the plaque blockage to the sides of the artery where it remains. The cardiologist removes the balloon catheter at the end of the procedure and the normal size of the artery is restored. A stent procedure follows an angioplasty and involves leaving a small metal mesh tube called a stent in the artery to keep it open. Stents can be bare metal or drug eluding, 
which release small amounts of drugs to prevent the artery from closing again. Prior to stent placement, and for many months or longer after a stent is placed, two medications are used together to prevent clotting, aspirin and clopidogrel. Coronary artery bypass graft surgery, or CABG, is the alternative procedure to angioplasty for opening blocked arteries. It improves blood flow to the heart by creating a new route or bypassing around a section of blocked artery. Surgeons take a segment, a graft, of a healthy blood vessel from another part of the body, such as the leg, and use this vessel to make a detour around the blocked part of the coronary artery. This creates a new route for blood to flow so that the heart muscle will get the oxygen-rich blood it needs. In coronary bypass surgery, the chest is opened and the blood is redirected through a heart-lung machine. After bypass surgery, a patient will likely stay in the hospital at least three to five days, sometimes longer. This drawing shows, on the left, how a vein from the leg has been grafted to the aorta, then connected to a coronary artery beyond a site of blockage. On the right, a small, native artery has been rerouted to a coronary artery, also to get blood past an area of blockage. Finally, after experiencing unstable angina, and STEMI, or STEMI, a patient may need a number of supportive medications and lifestyle modifications. In addition to medical treatment, patients may need to modify their risk factors for acute coronary syndrome by quitting smoking, increasing physical activity, decreasing high blood pressure, controlling their cholesterol, fat, sugar, and salt intake, and controlling diabetes. Patients may also require rehabilitation, education, or counseling. Please consult your doctor for more information on the treatment of acute coronary syndrome. To summarize, acute coronary syndrome is a set of three heart conditions, unstable angina, and two types of myocardial infraction, and STEMI, and STEMI. Each are preceded by a atherosclerosis, which narrows the coronary arteries and blocks blood flow to the heart muscle. Treatment for all three conditions, therefore, aims to replenish blood flow to the heart muscle. Initial treatment includes oxygen, nitroglycerin, morphine, and antiplatelet medication. Further medical treatment may include anticoagulants, thrombolytics, beta blockers, statins, ACE inhibitors, and calcium antagonists. PCI, by way of angioplasty and or stent, serves to open a clogged artery, and coronary bypass surgery creates a new blood flow path to the heart. Risk factor modification and rehabilitation may also serve to treat acute coronary syndrome. Here are just a few of the many resources available to educate you on the risk factors associated with ACS. These references were also used to assist in preparing this presentation. More references are listed here. These may be available on the internet or through your local medical library should you wish to do more reading on this subject. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of treatment for acute coronary syndrome. We wish you the best for the future and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.